I have to be honest, teenagers are not my favorite group of people to work with, but there's something really awesome about teaching confirmation. Confirmation is the process in which teenagers become part of the membership of the church. And we spend several months learning and growing and thinking about who God is and how we relate to God together. And there's something really awesome in this process. I get to know some of the really incredible young people in our church. And I also really get to know and reflect on on what I believe at this particular snapshot in time. And I always start confirmation with the same question. Do you think that there are more wheels or doors in the world? Now it's a nonsense question, but one that's intended to get the teenagers talking. If they're on team wheels, they point out that there are five or six wheels on every wheelie chair and think about how many wheelie chairs there are in all of the offices all over the world. If you're on team doors, they'll point out that there are at least 6,000 doors alone on every cruise ship and how many cruise ships are there in the world. But as they go back and forth trying to prove their point, it comes down to the real struggle of what do they believe and why? What makes them so sure that there's more doors or that there are more wheels in the world? And could they possibly be wrong? Starting off this way invites the teenagers in the room and me to think and realize that faith is not a fixed point, but rather a process. What we believe is something that grows and changes over time. When we start the process of our faith journey, whatever age that might be, we start to begin to grasp this truth of who God is, but it is truly something that we will always be seeking, that we will always be longing to hold on to. Because the more we experience and the more we grow and the more we listen and the more we learn, what we believe changes. And Never for a moment should we believe that what we believe doesn't matter because it really does. What we believe holds our lives together. At the core of who we are, what we believe holds in tension our values and our experiences and how we treat other people. What we believe shapes every moment of our lives. In today's scripture, we hear the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Philippi. And the truth was the church at Philippi was having a really hard time grasping what they believed. Now picture this early church trying to be sure of who Jesus was and how they proclaimed him and not really coming to a consensus of either of those things. And so Paul is trying to give them a core essence of how they should behave and how they should treat one another, what they should hold dear, what are the things that should fall away, and what are the things that should stand firm. And he says this, from now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent, if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. All that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, all that is worthy of these things. Practice these things, whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us, and the God of peace will be with you. The church was having a really hard time figuring out what they believed and coming to this understanding that more than some sort of prescription, there should be this root center of their belief, gave them the opportunity to grow and to learn and to listen. Paul was inviting in this particular letter space for them to think that their belief was more than what they owned themselves, but what they could find in community. We are a people who are always growing and learning and changing. And the truth is, often in our faith journey, we're presented with something that causes us to rethink what do we believe and why does it matter? How does my understanding of God change because I've experienced this or someone I love has experienced this or the world around me is experiencing this? We grow in our faith. You know, the confirmands in this process as they join the church are asked to write a creed. What do they believe about God? What do they believe about Jesus? What do they believe about the Holy Spirit? They're supposed to write a statement about what they believe about what faith looks like in community. What does it mean to be in relationship with other Christians? And then they're asked to write something about how that impacts their own lives. 
And I wonder if this might be a good process for us to practice again and again, because what we believe matters. Who we say God is at this particular moment in our lives shapes how we treat one another. What we value in community shapes where we go and how we serve. What we believe about how faith is poured out in our own lives is how we live our life every single day. What we believe matters. And while it is something that will change over time, the trueness and the holiness and the pureness and the loveliness and the praise that Paul is talking about is the center of that, is the root of that, is what holds that all together as things change. You know, I think that one of the most difficult parts of our faith journey as a people is standing up in a world that tells us what we think we should believe and saying we might believe something different. But what we believe about who God is, about who Jesus is and the work of the cross and the tomb, about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit finds its movement and being, shapes how we live our everyday lives. What we believe about what Christian community should look like is how we live out our faith in the world. And whether we realize it or not, what we believe shapes what we say and how we love and how we serve, both implicitly and explicitly, both on purpose and by accident, because what we believe matters. And that's not to say it won't change over time. In fact, I pray and hope and dream that it does for all of us, that as we go on to perfection, as we are being made more perfect in love, as we grow as a people of faith, our love and our our grace will change what we believe so that it will reflect, reflect more and more the love of God in this world. What we believe matters. Christian mystic writer uh, Anne Lamont writes this, I do not understand the mystery of grace, only that it meets us where we are, but does not leave us where we found us. Friends, this week, as we think about what we believe, may we follow God who meets us, but certainly does not leave us there. Would you pray with me? God of grace and glory, we thank you for the reminder today that we are called to a faith that holds what is pure and holy, what is admirable and true at the center. That as our belief changes and grows over time, help us, Lord, to seek and to see you. Today, Lord, we ask your blessing on all the young people who are going through the confirmation process and that your spirit would pour out upon them today and tomorrow and in the days and weeks to come that they might see and know you more. Thank you for your love that meets us, but does not leave us where we are. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.